Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So welcome, everybody. Welcome to another live interview show for Become a Fearless Father. And I'm very excited to present Dave Kieselman. And I hope I said that right. Yep. All right. Cool. Cool. So <laughs> I just told him, I said, look, let's go live. And I got to tell you this story. So I've been wanting to have Dave on for a while. I think a couple of months. I made this amazing well, okay, let's take away the amazing. I made a video interview to get him on. Nothing. And then all of a sudden, I'm on live on my show with somebody else. And all of a sudden, I see Dave just writing. And I I, I didn't see until after. So I was so bummed that I was like, man, I got to do this different because I can't see guys, right? So right. now we're on with different software just to make sure that from now on, all the other Dave Dieselmans in the world <laughs> that, that comment, I can see what they're saying. So that's that's awesome. And I was all excited. So half an hour before I started preparing, and <laughs> I had all these questions in my head way before, right? I want to ask this and this. So I'm preparing myself. Dave, I draw, a bl I drew a blank. <laughs> I started stressing. So it happens. Anyway, you're here. I'm excited. Dave, let's start off with the first question, man, and then we go into who's Dave. So. I'm just wondering, I've watched you. I'm amazed by your energy and all that stuff. And we go into that a little bit, but how does one become limitless? How does one become limitless? I, I, I love it. It's when, when I was, when I was looking at, at branding myself, when I was looking at, at the, all the things that I, like wanted to to like say the things that I wanted to to say that, that that you could be in this world. The one thing that I noticed that kept coming up for me over and over and over again in my life was the belief that I was limited by this, or the belief that I was limited by that. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, I I wasn't real athletic growing up. I wasn't you know my parents weren't real affluent when I was growing up. Uh, I, I didn't do things well. I didn't learn well. I didn't like all these things I believed were, were my limitations. And one by one, just as things became important to me, I realized that they were all abject bullshit. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of become limitless, the idea that you can become limitless is, is not to say that, that we all get to become these supermen. It is that I get to one by one, and so do you get to look at the be the, the beliefs that, that we carry that I believe are limiting me, that you believe are limiting you, that my clients believe are limiting them from having what they really want and what they would like to have. And we get to one by one, strip them away, look at them as bullshit, treat them like bullshit, and move past them. Mm. Is, has, is there like one limitless belief that you've seen is like a red line that ran through almost all of the people that you've been in contact with? Yeah, it, it's, it, it's the big one. It's the, it's the big one. And it is, I can't have X because of blank, mm. right? I can't have the, the relationship that I want because it takes too much time away from my business. I can't have the family that I want uh, because my wife or whatever. I can't have the lifestyle that I want because my job doesn't pay enough. I can't have the happiness that I want because of all the things. So it is the belief that I can't have whatever it is that you dream about in your life mm -hmm. because of whatever bullshit list of, of things that, that you stack against that. So the, the great limitless uh, belief, the, the, the great like limitless belief is that I can have, if you can think of it, you can have it. If you can think of it and you are willing to do what it takes to get it, you can have it. Period. That's powerful. You got to write I, that down. <laughs> and I, 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 I say it, I live by it. I stand by it. I, I, and I have yet to see someone who really desires to have a thing or a lifestyle or a relationship or a, or, or, or a conglomeration of those things who was really dedicated to having it and believe that it was available to them, not be able to have it. I've, I've yet to see that. 
Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, man. So it's really powerful. Let, let's, uh, I got to switch and stuff. I learned some new tricks. <laughs> I love new tricks. <laughs> so anyway, man, I, I appreciate that. That's very powerful. We're going to dive into it a little bit more. Uh, I was very impressed with, uh, with some of your, your lives that you did with your energy, your confidence. So I want to dive into that a little bit as well as in coaching, because well, we're going to go dive into that. But first of all, Dave, uh, share, do me a huge favor, share with us your, your background story. Uh, let's see. I, you know, born and raised in Los Angeles, California. Uh, I am, I am a native Californian. Um, and I grew up, I got into food and cooking very, very young. I got, uh, I started uh, cooking professionally very, very young. Um, it was something I was always interested in. Uh, I also uh, really, really battled with uh, substances uh, for for the better part of my young life. Uh, mm-hmm. And the, the the two seemed to go hand in hand um, in, in, in many in many instances, not all. Um, and so by 24, uh, I was a I was a homeless man. I was. Uh, I was a, I had a, 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 a terrible, terrible drinking problem and a terminal cocaine habit, uh, by 24 at 24, I got sober, uh, and have, have been, have been drug and alcohol free, uh, ever since it's coming right up on 20 years. Um, oh, thanks. It, it, it is, it is a, it is a part of my story, but, but and and it is is a part of my story that informs other parts of my story but it's not the biggest part of my story i mean like mm-hmm. my life began at sobriety like my ability to have my life began at my at uh, in sobriety uh and and i've worked in in high end hotels and restaurants and i've cooked for celebrities and i've i've cooked for uh for you know royalty i've cooked for politicians i've cooked for uh, all kinds of stuff and um and I got into Brazilian jiu-jitsu and, and Spartan racing and tough mutters and and really just you know I became a I became a father I became a, a a husband and 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 really I just watched this life blossom and every time I was confronted with something that I didn't believe that I could do or have or be or experience uh, we just moved right through it and and I learned that I could do anything I want in two thousand. Uh, in 2016, I formally launched my, my, my coaching. I've been coaching in various ways for about 16 years now. Uh, I formally launched a coaching practice in 2016. 2017 was my last day of a 30 year culinary career. And I've been, I've been, uh, coaching full time, uh, ever since. And that's, that's, that's the, the, the long and short of it. Uh, also 2000, 2017 was the big year. I, I, I launched, you know, launched a business, uh, entered a new career, got divorced. Um, and, uh, and, uh, I would like to say it was a very, it was a very friendly divorce. Uh, my, my ex-wife and I are good friends and, and I am in a, I am in a new, very, very powerful relationship that is, that is, uh, extraordinary. Nice man. Good to hear. Thanks for sharing. I always love it when people share openly about not just the great things like the coaching business that you set up, but also about, you know, the past and, and, and the struggles that you've been through. Right. Um, so in regards, because it's great that you amplify, you know, about the coaching, because that's some of the major things that I want to discuss with you. So first of all, man, what's, what's your philosophy? Because what I've seen is that so many of us are struggling, right? And me, including, and I recently discovered, like, look, man, I've been a dumbass because if I would have just gotten in contact with with one of the guys that I'm talking with now, like, right, and, and some of them, you know, like like Greg Cassidy is helping me out tons, mm-hmm. and Niji Solo probably. Oh, yeah. I love that dude so much. So he's been coaching me for for over a year as well, and all of a sudden it just went boom. So now I'm just thinking, like, why is it possible that nobody figured that out? Because it's not that difficult, right? <laughs> so, what? What is your philosophy in regards to uh, a coach or coaching? You know what my my personal philosophy is is a, I, I I hate to boil it down to a Nike commercial, but but really it is just do it. It really is about decide what you want and take the fearless action and do it. You know when we first started, it, it said become a fearless father uh, right on that thing, and I you know it it, it really touched me. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because that really is, that really is the bottom line. That really is, you know, and, and there's so much, there's so much fear of doing it wrong. There's so much fear of what if I fuck it up? What if I mess up? You know, and the real question is, how would you know? Right? How would you know if you made the wrong choice? How would you know if you messed it up? How would you even know? You start down a road. How would you even know what is what is like a little like like old timey like telegram girl come up and hand you a note? Go by the way, you screwed it up. Here's all the things that would have happened if you hadn't have turned down this road. And and you know, by the way, you made a horrible decision. Like it it never happens that way. You know, you make a decision. And you grow, your life grows, you have your experience, you learn your lessons. Uh, and, and so it's just, you know, it's just everybody is doing the best they can with what they have. Everybody, and I'm going to say this, I'm going to say it real loud. Everybody who you are, who, you know, in, in the people who are watching, uh, the people who hear this later on the replay, everyone you are watching, the Craig Cassidy's and the Dave Gieselman's and the Tony Robbins and the Gary V's and all of these people, the Kerwin Rays, all of them, 100% of them are just, they're, they're figuring out as they go along. Nobody's got it down. Nobody's got their shit together. Nobody. Okay. Everybody's just figuring it out, doing the best they can in the moment, making the best decisions they can. And what happens is when we think that I can't, when we think that, oh my God, what if, you know, what if this is the wrong thing? Or what if, what if it's the, the I make the wrong choice? It doesn't matter. Make it, make, go, 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 go. Standing still is the worst thing you can do. And that, mm -hmm. that, that's the bottom line. You know, becoming limitless is about taking a step, any step, any action, move in a direction. And then, and, uh, you know, Kenyon Zitska really says it best. And, and what Kenyon says is that, 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 uh, only a ship in motion can correct course, mm -hmm. right? Like only a ship in motion can turn. So you have to be a, you have to be in motion in order to, to change course. And, and I really believe that. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, Kenya would talk about boats. <laughs> this, All right. This is, he works on boats as well. That's awesome. Um, yeah, man, you've named all the people that I know as well that I look forward to. I still would love to meet, uh, what's in the current rate? Oh, Cur oh my God. I love that dude. Mm -hmm. I love that dude. Fire. So he's one of my, you know, uh, mm -hmm. one of the other ones that I want to hopefully get on the show one day. Um, so in regards to coaching, right? Now you mentioned the philosophy about coaching, but why? Because you mentioned like everybody is just on that journey of learning and then coaching at center because everybody you mentioned, they're all coaching, right? Mm -hmm. They're still learning, but they're also coaching. Yes. So why should somebody say, okay, yeah, I'm going to find a coach or I need a coach. What would be the reason for somebody to say, okay, yeah, I, I, I should or I must? Uh, I'm actually going to take that question. I'm going to take it backwards. Okay. Right. And, and, and here's, and here's why, why on earth would you not want to coach is the better question. Mm. Why on earth would you think that you could like could or should, or should be able to like figure it all out on your own? Why on earth? Like, you know, you know, who has coaches, every single Olympic athlete ever, every single pro athlete ever. Every single singer, musician, uh, actor, politician, businessman, every single person operating at the top of their game has a coach. They have a mentor. They have someone who is guiding them. They have someone who see, understands their vision, sees the mission, gets it, and is 100% behind the, the execution of of that vision and is willing to hurt your feelings, say things that you don't want to hear, push you, hold you accountable in all the things. Everybody performing at the top level has coaches. So the, the even better question is why would you not want one? Why would you think that if everybody who is crushing it, one of the one common things that every single one of those people has is, is they've invested in themselves, they've invested in mentors, they are paying a coach. If 
all of those people are crushing it and all of them have coaches. Why is it that you think that you don't need that? Why is it a person would think that they don't need mentorship, that they don't need that, that accountability, that they don't need that sort of guidance, that structure, that, that insight, you know, and, and I, I, I use, I use the, uh, you know, Le LeBron James, LeBron James doesn't have a coach because he's a shitty basketball player. LeBron James has a coach because he understands that he cannot play basketball and watch himself play basketball at the same time. He has blind spots. He is operating as the actor and he needs somebody who can say, I saw you do this. I saw you do this. I saw you do this. Let's work on these things. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, because you can't, nobody's a one man show and everyone who tries to be fails miserably. Yeah, absolutely. But you asked the right question. So why is it that so many people are just walking around, bumping their heads time and again, struggling time and again, and not taking that step to say, okay, yeah, I, I got to reach out to Dave and and get him to, to I don't know, help me with this struggle or help me with this question or. You know what? I, I, I say it's ego. I say it's fear. I say it's, you know, the, the, the culture we grew up on. The, you know, men pull themselves up by their bootstraps. Men don't ask for help. Men don't get, get real with their emotions. Men don't ask for, for things. Men don't like, and it's this belief that, that there is a weakness. It's this belief that that I am somehow diminished if I ask for if I ask for help if I need help if there's you know something there's so, there must be something wrong with me if you know I can't take everything I've learned and figure it out or like Google it and figure it out or whatever. So many people, you know, and then you get into you get into worthiness. You get into uh, you know I'm not I'm not worth. You know, my vision isn't isn't this amazing vision. I, I don't want to be a world changer. I just want to be a good dad. You know, mm -hmm. that's not worthy of 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 investing in you. You mean your legacy, your actual progeny, <laughs> the the further generations of 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 yourself. That's not worth you becoming a better human being for. That's mm -hmm. not worth you elevating yourself, you rising for. I don't I don't get it. So you know, you ask the question: Why are so many people? You know like bump in their heads. Why are so many people walking around and they go, no, I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't get it. I, I don't get it. I've, I've invested thousands and thousands of dollars uh, in, in, in my own, in my own coaching. I've, I've invested tens of thousands of dollars in my own, in my own growth, in my own. And I'll tell you this right now, if I'm going to bet everything on anything, it's going to be me. If I'm going to bet all of it, if I'm going to push all the chips into the center, it's going to be on me, right? It's going to be on this guy. And because there's nothing better for you to bet on than yourself. If you're going to push all the chips into the middle of the table, bet on you. Mm. Nice. Yeah, I like that way <laughs> you, you share that. Um it, it reminded me because it just baffles me that um, I invited a couple of guys to coaching and then they ended up not, not even showing up uh, not even saying like, Hey, look, man, I can't. It's like, wow. <laughs> so um, I was wondering what your view was on that. So I appreciate sharing that. So more now than once, I'll tell you this more than once I have pushed my last dollar toward coaching. Like I don't know where the rent's coming from. I don't know where the car payment's coming from. I more than once I have pushed my last dollar into coaching and in, into, into hiring my coaches and mm -hmm. in every, and every single time it has been, it has been, uh, the, the, the return on investment has been spectacular wow. and, and it's been the best thing I did. Wow. That's amazing. Let me ask you this then, because for those that, you know, see the light or maybe they're listening and now they're like thinking like, man, I've been a dumbass like me a couple of years ago <laughs> before I met Niji. Um, and they're like, all right, cool. Dave's right. I got to find me a coach. So how would somebody find the right coach for them? Like what would that process be? And how would they know? What would makes no, no? Okay, let's start there. Sorry, I <laughs> go ahead of myself. It's yeah. a, it's a, it's a, it's a great question, and it, 
it, it, it looks like this. Find the guy who speaks your language. Find the person or the man, the woman, whatever, who when, when they talk, you're like, yes, yes. How come nobody else is saying that? Or someone who has the life that you want, right? Somebody who is living the life that you want to have. Somebody who is exuding the confidence that you want. Somebody who has the relationship that, that you're dying for. Like whatever it is. And it's one of my favorite things about uh, the coaching space, the coaching industry. There is no competition. Look, I am a high energy, loud mouth, foul mouth guy. I am a club, not a scalpel. Like there's a lot of stuff about me. I understand that I am an absolute tidal wave of a human being. I get it. And I get results. I get powerful results because of who I am and because uh, the way that I am uh, really resonates with some people and it really resonates with high performers. It really resonates with people who are like, who are crushing it here, crushing it here, crushing it here, but their relationships are not where they want it to be. Their, mm -hmm. their, their parenting is not where they want it to be. You know, they have that voice inside in the back of their head that, that keeps telling them that they're, they're, they're a fraud and they're a phony and they're full of shit. You know, and, and these are the people that I work with best because we can go and we can look at your evidence and we can go. So when you are looking for a coach, when you are looking for a mentor, when you are looking for this stuff, listen for the people who make sense to you. There is no competition. The people who are, are attracted to my message are not the same people who are attracted to, um, you know, actually me and Craig Cassie have a pretty, have a pretty similar message. But, you know, you know, the people who, who listen to me are not the same people who are attracted uh, to, um, you know, you know, uh, uh, you know, Alex Moscow, the, the same people who are, who are attracted to me are not the ones who are attracted to, you know, um, to, to different people in the space. There is no competition. You, my voice resonates with certain people. Those people become my clients. My voice does not resonate with certain people and they are other people's clients. I do not try to attract people who are not my clients. If my voice, if my message, if the, the way that I am, if the life that I lead, if the, the relationships that I have are not attractive to you, I'm not your coach, mm -hmm. right? Uh, maybe it's Nick Tilia. Maybe it's Courtney Tilia. Maybe it's Stefan Lovegrove. Maybe it's, it's, it's any of these people who are just, and we're, we're all different. We all carry different messages. We all carry messages and styles and philosophies that have been informed by our own lives. And so mm -hmm. when you're listening to people, you're paying attention to the space, it's the people who grab you. It's the people who, when you're lying awake at night, you're thinking about that thing that they said, or you save their videos and you go back and you're like, God, God damn, that makes so much sense. You know, that's, that's how you find a coach. And then when you reach out to him, when you talk to him, you're whatever, uh, leave your, leave your fear at the door in that conversation because they're going to bring it up. They're going to bring up your fears. They're going to push you. They're going to stretch you. You are, it is going to be a, 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 a very, a very, uh, sort of opening conversation for you. Hmm. Exactly. Wow. I appreciate you sharing that. And in that regards, um, for those of us that are, starting out like me in the coaching business, what, in your opinion, makes a good coach? Oh my God. Be a good listener. Okay. Mm -hmm. Be a good listener. That's, that's, that's all you do. You know, we coaching gets separated from therapy in this one way. And, and, and that is that, is that we, we, we listen. I strongly believe that I do not have your answers. I strongly believe that you have your answers. I mm -hmm. strongly believe that you are in possession of your own answers. And I don't, I don't care as much about what makes you tick about what gets you to the thing that you get. I don't care as much about, I mean, we'll get to a lot of that. I care about what you do standing like obsessively for someone's greatness is the best part about being a coach, being like a, a, an obsessed, a psychotic cheerleader for someone's absolute highest, best, the best version of them, the most outlandish, 
crazy version of them, like to be like a psychotic cheerleader for somebody's best. And I refuse. And you know, the other thing is, is abs I absolutely refuse to believe in your fears and limitations. I do not believe in them. I don't have them. Only you believe in your fears and limitations. I do not. And I will stand for your best absolutely every time because I don't experience your fears. You experience your fears. What happens is when we allow clients to enroll us into their fears and their limitations, instead of us enrolling them into the belief in the highest vision of their own vision for their own life. So mm -hmm. that's, that's the big piece, right? Is, is the best, the, the best coaches and roll our clients into their own visions rather than allowing our clients to enroll us into their fears and limitations. I got that from Alex Moscow. I didn't make that up, but when I heard it, it was an absolute game changer. They, I enroll clients into the, the, their best selves, into a vision for them to be their absolute best. They don't enroll me into their fears and limitations. I, yeah, that's very powerful. Now, let me ask you this, Dan, because what I've noticed is that a lot of people don't even have a vision, right? Right. So can, can you explain to um, those of us that, the people that don't know what's a vision, to those dads that are there like, what vision, what's he talking about? Are we <laughs> taking this a whole now away? Uh, what's a vision and why is it so important for someone to, to have one? Oh, uh, buddy, you're about to get into my favorite conversation ever, man. Nice. Okay. So people ask themselves all the time, what is my purpose? What is my, what am I, what am I here for? What is my job? Uh, you know, they, they ask the exact same question worded like, what is God's will for me? Like what? And so, and here's, here is my, my only answer, my favorite answer. Here's the only thing that ever made sense to me. Your, the things that bring you joy are a breadcrumb trail to your passions. Your passions are a breadcrumb trail to your purpose. Why am I here? I don't know. Maybe it's the thing you can't stop thinking about. You can't stop reading about. You can't stop googling about. The can't the thing that's your favorite thing in the whole wide world to talk about. And I don't care if it's working out or baseball cards. Like it doesn't matter. Okay, whatever that thing that you just it just lights you up. Having a conversation about it lights you up. Talking, you know, you find other people and you find you speak the same language about this thing and it lights you up. This is your passion, the things that just crank you up. These are your passions and they will lead you to your purpose. Why else would they be there? There is absolutely zero waste in universal or energetic economy. If you were not supposed to follow these things, they would not be as powerful in your mind as they are. They would not take up as much space in your mind. They would not take up as much energy as they do. You are supposed to follow them. That is why they are there. My drive to serve other human, other men and women at a very, very powerful level has been with me since I was a child. It, it began as a prime nurturer when I was cooking for other people and I absolutely loved it. It has turned into coaching, speaking, writing, doing interviews, podcasts. It is meeting people one-on-one, -on -one, sitting down, walking onto stages, doing these things because Serving people at a very high level is absolutely what I am obsessed with. It is the only thing that I think about. It is the only thing that I want to do. Nothing brings me joy. Nothing lights me up. Nothing revs me up more than helping other people become their best selves. And any, if anyone who has ever uh, trained for a Brazilian jiu-jitsu tournament with me knows it. Anyone who has ever run a Tough Mudder with me knows it. Anyone who's ever run a Spartan race with me knows it. Anyone who I have worked with in 12-step in knows it. Anyone who's been to my sponsorship workshops knows it. Anyone who was around me understands that my job, my purpose, my passion in life is to help people become who they are supposed to be. I am an absolute servant and I absolutely love it. And I have since I was very, very young. So 
when you ask me, what is, how do I find my purpose? Begin with what do you like? What do you like? Write down all the things that you like. And then of those things, pick out the ones that you love, that if you could spend the rest of your life doing paid or unpaid, you would just spend your life messing around with this. And if it's model trains, your purpose is model trains. And I don't know if it's to teach people, to serve people, to sell model trains, to, to do whatever. But if all you want to do is tinker around with model trains, your purpose is model trains. Follow it, run with it. There is money to be had. There is that you can get paid for it. If you're good at something, if you love something, you can get good at it. If you get good at something, you get paid for it. If you can get good at something that the world needs, you can get paid a lot for it. Mm -hmm. So follow your, follow the things that you love. If you don't know, reach out to me. I actually have a really great exercise that I take people through in terms of finding their own passions finding their own purpose. I, I have a, a process that I take clients through when they go, well, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what, I don't know what my passions are. And I have a process that we can get you there. Nice, man. <laughs> I got quiet, which right? <laughs> probably is not the first time that happened to you. It's, I just want to say to the people that are watching and listening to this, I don't know, or in the, in the replay, that is exactly why it's so important to have a purpose and then have a vision because with that passion that you explain this that you can just feel your energy i and i'm not sure if it's true but as soon as you start talking i felt like your goosebumps <laughs> right yeah it's, you feel that imagine if you at home watching this have that every single day how your life would look like instead of living your life without a vision or a purpose or just not knowing what it is. So as David, Dave said, he has a way of helping you discover that. I highly recommend you get in contact with him because for me, when I discovered my purpose, um, man, things started changing and clicking. and, and well, look, look it, cha and it changes the whole game. You mm -hmm. know, it changes the whole game once you're like, oh, Here's what I'm supposed to be doing. And anything that that I end up doing as the result of doing that is also what I'm supposed to be doing. Right? You, mm -hmm. you find that you find that, you know, like I use the I use the model trains. If you're into model trains and you really get passionate about it, and you find that really what you are fundamentally is a teacher who teaches people how to you know, put these things together or teaches people how to construct these vast worlds of, of model trains. And I'm not into model trains. I don't know. I don't know anything about them, but I, I know that, that there are people who, who dedicate all their time to teaching people how to, and how did they get into that? And they make a lot of money and they, they, mm. they do really well. And they have the, like, all they do is they hang out with model trains and people who love model trains and, and everything else. And if that's, if that's your thing, why shouldn't, why, why would your job then be an accountant? Like what, like if, if that is, if that is so powerful in you, why on earth would your purpose to be an accountant? So you can pay the bills. So on your little off time, you can tinker with, with, with model trains. Like why would, why would that be? Why would you be a, a, a like a, a vet if, if all you wanted to do with all of your time was messing around with model training. You should be a model mm -hmm. training guy. And then find out that that you're a teacher, you're a mentor, you're a whatever, because it gives you access to the people who are also into that into those things. Exactly. Yeah, that's some great stuff. And I hope I keep forgetting, but I hope people just like me got a pen and some paper. I'm <laughs> taking some notes. I sure am. I love it. Thanks a lot, Dave. I really appreciate it. I'm learning tons and I hope the people are as well. Um well, we've been through a lot. So what would you suggest? Because when I look at you, right, for me, in regards to your coaching, you're like, I, I looking up is maybe the wrong word, but I look really like, okay, I have my vision as well. And I look at you and I look at Craig and I'm like, okay, yeah, that's, that's where I want to go, right? What are some of the things that you've done that are like, okay, I've done that and that, and that really helped me to become successful and, and grow to where I'm at right now? Uh, 
uh, two things. Uh, one, uh, invest relentlessly in yourself. Like just continue to seek out mentorship, continue to like go to events, go to retreats, learn new stuff. Like, like just if, if what, you know, just, just like the model train guy, if this, if, if you're a coach and, and, and you want to immerse yourself in it, just immerse yourself in it, just learn everything you can talk to as many people as you can coach as many people as you can. Uh, you will have good experiences. You will have bad experience just one and, and we're back to just do it we're back to just be in motion the one thing i will tell you that will destroy your efforts more than anything is comparison mm -hmm. do not do it do not do it do not compare your year one to somebody else's year 12 mm -hmm. do not do it do not compare your day-to-day -day life to someone else's highlight reel don't do it, right? When we get into comparison, what we do is we see somebody who is doing something and what we say is, I can't do that. That is not available to me. The results they're having, the, 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 the success they're having is not available to me. And then we get frustrated. And then what do we do? We sit there and we just scroll through the Facebook, right? We just scroll through social media, looking for answers, looking for answers, looking for answers. How do I become like that guy? By putting your damn phone down and immersing yourself in the process, go serve humans. And if you're and if you're you're a high school basketball player and you want to be the next Stephen Curry, then go shoot baskets. Go teach younger kids how to dribble. Be a teacher. Teachers assimilate information faster than anybody. The best way to wrap your head around something is to teach it. So, uh, so class, reach out to, reach out to people who are newer than you in the space, reach out to people who are, who are just wanting to get started and say, I don't know much, but here's what I know and, and work with them. Um, just bury yourself in it and, and stay in your own lane, stay in your own experience. You, when we start comparing, it's, it's just a dangerous place to, to go. Yeah, absolutely. I like the fact that you shared, like, you know, what we do often, and especially with things like Facebook, is the only thing we see is some pictures, right, of a moment. And now I learned, I don't know if you know the show, Malcolm in the Middle. Uh, I, I saw it a while back, and it always reminds me, if I see that perfect family picture, everybody's smiling and hugging each other, it just reminds me of that picture that, Malcolm in the middle and his family try to take. They were fighting right before. And then it's okay, pitch here, five, four, three, two, one. And then everybody goes quickly. And then right after they're fighting and each other's hairs again, right? So right. you don't know how it goes. So that's great advice. I appreciate that. Um, so one of the things, as I mentioned before, that really struck out from you and when I see you going live and stuff like that is – that confidence, that certainty that you exuberate, if that's the right word, right? It just shines out of you. I heard somebody else say the other day, like, wow, he's really talented. And I think that's undervaluing what the journey that you've been through. Because you just mentioned, like, you've been a coach for 16 years already. Can you share, like, what would be the steps for somebody to, to really – you know, come out with such confidence as you do um, during lives or during speaking, right? Confidence is the result of courage, okay? Confidence mm -hmm. is the result of courage. Courage, uh, courage, and, I, and I'll say this, I actually, uh, I do a good talk about this, is courage only exists in the past tense. There, in, in the present tense, there is fear and motion forward. Like, that's all there is. Right, you're you're standing on the you're, you're standing on the, the the edge of a uh, of an airplane. You got your parachute on. You're ready to jump out. There is no courage in that moment. There is fear, mm -hmm. and there is a desire to skydive. Right, Th those are the only two things that exist. As soon as you exit the doors, right, your hands and your feet are clear, and you turn around, then there was courage. Courage only exists in the past tense. In the present, there is only 
fear and desire. Okay. And so what happens is people wait and they go, well, I'll wait till I have the courage. Fuck that. You'll never have the courage. You only had the courage, right? You will only see the courage in the rear view mirror. So move forward, make mistakes, do it wrong. I encourage everybody uh, and the, the, the group of, of people that I'm currently coaching with right now, they're, they're about to embark on a, on a, a 30 day live uh, challenge and they're going to go live every day for 30 days. And the people who are most nervous about it, though, I, w- what I tell them is be content to do it shitty. Be okay to do it wrong. Be okay to do it like shit. There's, you will grow. You will grow. And your, as your experience grows, your confidence grows. As you do it more and more and more, your ability to do it more and more will expand. It's like lifting weights. It's like, it's like doing anything else. The more reps you get in, it never gets easier. You just get stronger. You just get more confident. Some days it's really, really hard for me to hit that live button. But my experience is that if I just do it, then something worthwhile comes out. And the days that something worthwhile doesn't come out, who cares? It's just one day. It's just one message. All right, whatever. Leave that out in the universe. Somebody's going to get something out of that someday. Who cares, right? But it's about getting in the reps. It's about getting in the movement. It's about not waiting until the time is right. I promise the time will never be right. I promise the money is never, the money for coaching is never going to be there. Like it's, you know, it's always until it is, until the time is right, until you're like, I don't care if the money's not there, I'm going to figure it out. Until, until the, the results you want become more important than you nurturing your fear, just come out, just get it, just get it. Act like you're supposed to be here, right? Like be out there. And if you are driven to do it, then you will get better at it. If if everything in you fights it, maybe you're not supposed to be doing it. Maybe you're not supposed to be. Like maybe that's not where your best talent is. Okay, But if what you want is to put yourself out there and put yourself out there uh, with courage and with confidence, then you, the first part is to do it scared and be okay to do it scared and be okay to do it shitty. Mm-hmm. In that regards, because I'm sure that you also had clients that weren't scared and start doing it. Who in the end have you seen, if, if, if you can even compare that, but who have you seen like got in the end the best result? The person that was scared or the person that was just like, oh yeah, I'm going to do this and I'm going to crush it. You know what? It's, it's the person who surprised themselves, right? It's the person who went, who did it and who did it, who did it in fear like enough times that they didn't notice that they transitioned into confidence. And then all of a sudden they're like, holy shit, you know, these are good and they're getting a lot of traction. They're getting a lot of attention. I'm, I'm, I'm putting stuff out. The, you know, the, the people with, the people who start with, I mean, and have a powerful belief around it. Having a powerful belief is important for sure, but it is it is not as important. And I personally believe this, and there are lots of people who will debate me on this, but having a powerful belief about where you're going to me is not nearly as important as, uh, as being willing to just push through it, just push push through fear, just push through fear, just push through fear, just push through pain, just push through resistance, just do it. There's a reason why you're doing it. You're being called, Mm -hmm. right? If you're being called and you can't like quite put that vision together quite yet, but it, but doing this is really important. It's the people who push past the fear, right? Uh, Because what they get out of that uh, more often than not is compassion for other people who need to push past the fear. Mm-hmm. And as coaches, if there is any single trait that we can, that we can have, we can live, we can exude, we can carry, we can teach. It is compassion. It is empathy. It is, I, there's to me as a coach, there is nothing more important to me than, than to really be able to have express and convince you of compassion. 
Mm -hmm. I hear you. I've been there. You are totally where you are supposed to be. Where you are is fine. Where you are is, is right. It's appropriate. And I promise you're not the first person who's ever been there. And I promise you're not alone. Okay. I promise. I promise you can get to where you want to be. I promise that you can have that life that you want. I promise. And I promise that I know how difficult it is. I promise. Like, I get it. I know how daunting it is. I know how fearful it is. I know how steep that climb looks. Mm -hmm. I am not afraid of it. And I will walk every step next to you because I get it. And I, because I understand how daunting it is. I promise you don't have to do it alone. Mm -hmm. Amazing, man. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm absolutely enjoying this. I appreciate that. Um, oh, yeah, there it is. So you mentioned, for example, like, look, the, we're, so many of us are in the same space, right? And I keep telling everybody, I keep telling my uh, my clients that I have at the moment is like, look, man, you don't have competitors. There's, there's so much abundance in the world. There's so many clients out there that need you, that just want you for who you are. And besides, I mean, look, look at us now, right? We're working together um, in my space. I've been working with Brandon, who you know very well, oh, Larry, Larry, right? And with all these guys and, and people are sometimes asking me like, dude, why, why are you connecting with these guys, man? You're, you're competitors. I'm like, there's no such thing as competitors. There's only abundance. So what's, what's your philosophy in regards to, um, to abundance and a, um, how do you call that short? Uh, I can't come up with the word right now. And then the opposite of abundance. Like, oh, the scarcity? The scarcity. There scarcity. you go. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. People who look for scarcity will find scarcity. People mm. who look for abundance will find abundance. People who look for collaboration will find collaboration. People who look for competition will find competition. Okay. Uh, to, to the people who wonder uh, about that for your clients, who, who uh, you know, are, are wondering about competition, uh, l let me be very clear. There is someone out there right now who is in desperate, desperate need of your mm. unique voice and experience. Your unique voice and experience is the only one that is going to resonate with them. You are absolutely selfish. You are absolutely uh, despicable for not sharing it. Mm -hmm. your voice, your message, your experience, your approach, your philosophy is going to make the difference between someone who, who's going to put a gun in their mouth or not. Mm -hmm. Share it. There is no competition. There's absolutely nobody who is hearing this right now who's going, that Dave guy, that's my fucking coach who is going to hire you. And there's absolutely nobody who you are, who, when you are talking, when you are in your lives, when you are talking to a crowd, when you are uh, on your podcast, there's absolutely nobody who is going Klaus, This, this guy is my guy, this class guy, everything he says resonates with me. They are not my clients. Mm -hmm. I could not attract them. If I wanted to, I couldn't make my, my programs, um, attractive enough for them to, for them to, to like, you know, come over to me. I couldn't do it. There is somebody who needs your unique voice. You have an obligation to put it out there. And for you to not put it out there is, is, is despicably selfish. Mm. There is nothing but abundance there. If, if your message if your message, and, and, I, and I, I ran through this with a client one day, but if your message resonated with only 0.000001% of the earth's population, you still have more clients than you could see in a lifetime. Mm -hmm. how, how, how is there scarcity? How, how is that possible? Okay. Mm -hmm. If you're, if you're, if you're, uh, message, okay, 
was was attractive to one ten billionth of the population, okay, then you still have more. You still have more clients than you could ever serve in your lifetime. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and 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 so I, I will say this: thinking that you are 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 not attractive to anybody is as grandiose as thinking that you're attractive to everybody. Mm -hmm. You're still bigger than you think you are. You're still more important or less important than you think you are. Just be where you are. You're mm -hmm. great. There is no competition. There is no scarcity. There is only abundance. There is only joy. There is only love. Great message. And um, what I wanted to ask in that, actually, let me go to a different question before we almost get into the end. And I always keep asking uh, a lot of questions and what guys like you in regards to entrepreneurship, uh, which is part of that entrepreneurship. But for me, dadpreneur means dad comes first, entrepreneur comes second. Um, what's your, um, your outtake on um, fatherhood? My, my son is, my son is 15. He'll be, he'll be 16 this year. Um, mm -hmm. Having a son, having a child changed my life. It changed everything about me. Uh, and what I will say is, and many, many dads relate to this, is I did not, I did not expect the arrival of my son to change me the way it changed me. My, the arrival of my son did not, ex, did not, I did not expect it to change my view of the world and my place in it the way it did. Um, as far as fatherhood goes, I, I, you know, it, it, it really, it comes back to compassion. It comes back to, um, to our jobs as our jobs as parents. And I say this a lot is to provide an ever widening perimeter around our children in which they can uh, safely fail. Uh, my job is not to give my son everything. My job is not to uh, impose a bunch of discipline. My job is not to uh, impose upon him my beliefs. My job is not to impose upon him uh, my values. My job is to give him enough space and enough guidance uh, and enough love and a place to kind of process all of these things for him to develop his own. Uh, his job is to fail spectacularly over and over and over again, uh, spiritually, emotionally, physically, um, uh, educationally, intellectually, uh, philosophically. His job in this world, just like yours and just like mine, is to fail so much and so often that it chips away everything and leaves us with this. You know, somebody asked Michelangelo, how did you how did you create the, 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 the statue of David? And he's like, he started with this great big piece of marble. He just chipped away everything that wasn't David, right? Mm -hmm. And so our job is to chip away everything that's not ourselves. And the way we do that is by failure. The way we do that is by experimentation. The way we do that is by having experiences that, that we go either that was effective or that wasn't effective. And my job is to provide a place for my son to have experiences that are not effective. So he can learn from them. You know, I, I am not the do this, don't do this guy. I'm not that dad, right? Uh, I am the treat everybody with kindness, you know, treat everybody with kindness, you know, and, you know, but he's also been doing Brazilian jujitsu since he was four. You know, I mean, I, he, my son treats everybody with kindness. My son treats everybody with compassion. My son, talks to people and he's helpful and he's, and he's kind and he's loving and he's sweet uh, and he's generous with his emotions and he's generous with his time and he's generous with his friendship. Um, I, I wouldn't recommend putting your hands on him though. Right. <laughs> like, like, I mean, I've taught him how to defend himself. I've taught him how to, how to assert himself. I've taught him that he can be anywhere in the world that he wants to be, that he has as much right to be anywhere as any, as anybody else. That, that he can he can have whatever he wants. All he has to do is go get it. That, in my opinion and in my experience, is what a father does, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 my dad, um, my 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 father, uh, who who 
passed away uh, like like two weeks ago tomorrow. Um, mm -hmm. uh, three weeks ago tomorrow. Um, you know, taught me that he just gave me space. My father just gave me space to to become who I was. He gave me the space to to discover who I was, to discover what I liked, to discover what did and didn't work for me um, ethically and morally and 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 emotionally. My my father just just gave me space. He provided boundaries. He provided hard boundaries for me. I knew where the boundaries were. I knew what 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 they looked like. He was very, very clear, but he was also very kind and did not want to impose his beliefs or his morals onto me. He wanted me to find my own. And, and, mm -hmm. uh, and I will say this, my father is the greatest example of manhood that I have ever experienced. My dad uh, is the prime example to me and will always be of what a man could and should be. Uh, he was kind. He was strong. He was loving. He was un, like like unconditionally accepting uh, uh, of human beings. Uh, and 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 my father set the number one finest example uh, I have ever encountered of what uh, of of how a man acts, how a man holds himself, uh, and, and and what a man does. And I've met some amazing amazing men in my life. My father, uh, with no with no close second set the finest example of manhood that I've ever experienced. That's amazing, Dave, and condolences, of course, for your loss. Um, I'm, I'm sure you, all your clients and, and me in particular now that you're on my show, we're grateful for what he has taught you and the man that you have become. Um, I really appreciate it. That was great advice. Um, and it was great advice for, for our hour. It's almost up. Um, to be honest, man, I know I keep looking at my papers because I got tons more questions. We uh, can do this again anytime you want, brother. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, for now, Dave, if there's others listening to this, um, you know, they want to follow you, they're like, wow, this Dave guy really resonates with me. Um, how can we follow you? Uh, how can we get in contact with you? Ask maybe some extra questions. Uh, you can find me uh, on Facebook. This is this is on Facebook. You can you can. Uh, find me. You can follow me. I am on uh, Instagram. Uh, I you, my web uh, my website is uh, www.become limitless. So become hyphen limitless dot com. Um, you can through Facebook, through Instagram, LinkedIn. Uh, ha however you like, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I'm really very accessible. Uh, Facebook Messenger is one of the best ways to get a hold of me. Hey, I saw your I saw your video with class. Uh, I, I I have a couple questions. Uh, you know what you said this. I was wondering if you would look. I am I am completely open. Uh, if I, I I I can I can always make time for people. Uh, it's it's uh, it is a joy uh, to talk to people. And if I can uh, if I can help you, like I said, I like my my job is to serve humans. And and if and if there's anything that I can do, if I can take a few minutes, if I can answer questions for you, if I can, if I can help you in any way, it is absolutely my joy to do. Please do not hesitate to reach out. Great. And you're doing a great job at making an impact on people's lives. Um, at least I absolutely enjoy your energy, as I mentioned before, and the message that you're sharing. So I appreciate that. Um, I put in the comment section also the link to your um to your page so thanks for that um yep all right you could have shared that in the, in the there you go wait everybody's waiting for the people that are watching now or the people that are going to watch in the replay here is it in the comment section as well Perfect. the website so you can check it out please do so um and dave again thanks so much for being on for taking the time to share your insights your experience your knowledge with us i really appreciate it i learned tons and I'm about to take action on what you said and a couple of things that yeah. will start with me. Um, everybody else, if you enjoyed this, make sure that you put your heart down there. Share it. It's important. And as Dave said, connect with him. He's very open and honest and welcoming to get the opportunity to help you progress in your life. So take care and we'll see each other very soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Are you still meeting up with your friends? Now that you're a father, 
kids making you stress out, you got no time for yourself to work out, read, or relax. Can you still remember the time you were hanging out with your friends, feeling energetic, happy, and confident? Spending time together and talking about your life and your crazy dreams. You're feeling alone now, don't you? No one to share your challenges with, and you're just running around from one storm into the next. Well, it's time to change this now. Join me and the Brotherhood of Fearless Fathers to speak on a weekly basis with like-minded dads to crush your challenges, face your fears with determination, be held accountable and regain control of your life. If you want to become the hero your family needs you to be, then go to becomeafearlessfather.com slash brotherhood. Looking forward to seeing you on one of our next calls.